Hey there, Wargamers Just Sam Page here, and today, boom, I want to take a look back at our Gamma Galaxy Clan Wolf mech that we painted. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you being here. And if you are a new subscriber, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. And if you have not already seen the rest of this vi this video series, if this is your first time tuning in, take a look back at the uh, the channel. Look for our playlist and see if you can find the Gamma Galaxy Clan Wolf paint tutorial because that is what this is from and today's video is going to be a look back at this mini but don't think i forgot all you viewers who uh have been coming in and tuning in even though you're already a subscriber and following what i do thank you for having my back i appreciate you having my six thanks for being an awesome lance mate star mate whatever the case may be for you thank you for being here to support what i do that said again i want to get into talking about this mini here kind of give it a recap so first and foremost um this was a blast to paint i think it is a fun showcase uh for you guys in youtube land and the battletech community about how you can use various tools that we've added to your tool chest over time here to achieve a cool looking paint scheme with a little bit of effort but not a lot not a lot this was actually pretty pretty fast in my opinion um Obviously, I get uh, with some regular ED um, viewers who don't have airbrushes, and hopefully seeing the things I do with it and the speed with which you can do it, um, even if you're going for, like, not crazy detail level, but good enough, the things that the airbrush will do for you. So that's a big thing that I want to um, really encourage you guys to consider is looking into airbrush options. If you want recommendations, I'm happy to give those to you. Um, it doesn't have to be the most expensive thing in the world to get into, but I promise you if you get into it now, if you start extrapolating over time about how many minis you're going to paint, uh, how many you're going to prime, you're going to base coat, you're going to varnish, um, the amount of time you spend airbrushing is going to um, pale in comparison to the amount of time you would spend hand brushing, hand doing all of that. So the airbrush at the, um, the beginning is going to cost a little bit of money up front, but over time it's going to save you loads of time, loads of time. Um, the other major thing with the airbrush too that it, it brings to the table for you is a, priming and varnishing minis is much cheaper with an airbrush, and B, it's less worrying, uh, or you have, it's less um, um, dependent upon the weather. So uh, if you're using rattle cans for um, uh, priming and especially varnishing, uh, humidity plays a huge factor in spraying on your minis with a rattle can with an airbrush. You don't have to worry about that, so that's another perk. Uh, that said, for the paint scheme in general, um, as we went through, the masking portion really sucked. Um, I didn't like that masking material, so in hindsight, now that I, I know what that's, um, its strengths are and its glaring weakness, I would go back to using Silly Putty. We did get through this, but Silly Putty would have been a better option. Um, I think in terms of the paint scheme itself, I do like it. I think it's very cool. I think that the, unfortunately, the clam wolf decal is too close in color, so it gets lost. That's just the nature of this paint scheme with the orange. Um, but I do think if I had to do it all over again, like if you're looking from this angle downwards, I think this mini looks fantastic for what we did with speed paints. Um, I think a lot of people think speed paints are cheating or lazy or you can't do good things. I, I honestly think this looks really, really good. Um, all things considered with speed paints and any chance I get to throw in my wizard in a video, um, I'm using some contrast paints on his beard as well uh, to help with the, um, uh, the shadows and the shading. You can do good stuff with it. It does not have to be just one thick coat. And I think this is a good example of using speed paints through an airbrush to get great effects. Uh, that said, you're still going to have to come in and hand um, edge highlight and hand detail, dry brush, all of those things. But the base prime or the, the base um, level of paint, the, the core of your paint scheme is very, very fast. Uh, so if I did have to do this again, one of the things that I would do or I had been mentioning before I got sidetracked, the colors from this direction look really, really good. From this direction, it's very, very dark. Uh, so with my initial prime, uh, with the zenithal and the pre-shading I did, this was very, very dark. I probably would go with more of a brown or a beige, or not beige, uh, brown or neutral color uh, into white. So it was a little lighter. Hit it with that magenta, then hit it with the colors from the top, just to make this spot here, this whole side, a little brighter. I think this looks great. The color right around here. I would prefer to be all here and then have the bright spots on the edges and i didn't get that so um unfortunately it's not there when you're viewing the mini from these angles though and from tabletop stuff where you're playing that's gonna be fine it's just when you pick it up and you're looking at the sides it's not as good as i would want but that um that doesn't mean that the the paints and the application was wrong it just means i needed to adjust the initial um pre-shading and zenithal that I applied. Um, the same process would uh, yield the results we want. I just needed to tweak this, and if I had to do this a bunch more times, then we could uh, we could enhance it. Uh, but that is an area that I think would be good for growth. 
I love how the canopy worked here. We spent some time on blending the white up and then doing the purple and pink. Let me see if we can't get a little tighter on that. Yeah, look at that. That's that's speed paint and then some white paint to um, uh, do the, the glints and the dots. And I obviously blended, I did like pre-shading with the white and gray, then contrast over. But using the um, kind of pinky purple and purple contrast paint or speed paint as it were from uh, Army Painter, I was able to put those on at the same time and kind of feather it and then uh, uh, blend it together and do a few layers of glazing and boom, like it was super fast, super fast. Whereas opposed to this guy here, I'm working on that canopy took me forever and yeah, honestly it doesn't, it looks good, but like considering this probably took sub a half an hour and that took a couple hours, like I think this still looks really, really good given the time investment. Um, the mini here has an imperfection on this corner of the rocket pod and there's nothing I could really do. There's a, a plastic goop in here um, from the mold and I'd have to cut that out and we did not have a missile dot here. Um, that's just a flaw with the mini and you can clean mold lines to your heart's content. Um, that is reconstructive and it's not something I'm going to do so that does irritate me that it's there but it is what it is. Um, as I mentioned in the last video segment for the series where we did the basing, I think of putting some jersey barriers um, or uh, traffic uh, control cones or a vehicle on here, like a little civilian vehicle, especially if it was one he was stepping on, would have been great. Um, but for the speed with which we were trying to achieve um, the paint scheme here, I did not do that. But I do think that's somewhere where, for a little extra effort, we can bring this guy um, up to another notch of uh, quality. Um, I initially would love to do some different things other than metallics, maybe work on some non-metallic metals, but I do like how those turned out. Um, and in general, the final thing I think that I would probably do if I was trying to take this to the next level is uh, work on some manual edge highlights. Like This stuff looks good, but I think if I came in with some really bright like uh, orange colors here, um, maybe a little bit of orange mixed with beige to get a kind of a, a off orange or, or almost yellow uh, extreme highlight and start highlighting up the high points, I think he would pop a bit more. Do I think it's necessary? No, but I think if that is something that you wanted to do, that would show and look really, really nice. But uh, uh, all in all, I really like how this turned out. I think that the core concepts and tools I am presenting are very easy, hopefully, to follow. And if anything, it is putting something into your tool chest that you can use on future projects of your own. And uh, in particular, I think the canopy is really, really good. The airbrush stuff's really good. Um, materials for you guys to, to have been exposed to. And then the glows for the guns, because like these are core things for battle tech that a lot of artists do, and a lot of people in the community really like. They like the jeweling, they like the lasers. Those are very, very easy. I presented those in such a way that hopefully that's easy for you to follow. And then again, the airbrush is just for speed and shows you what you can do with speed paints very, very quickly. So hope that you guys did enjoy this. If there's something that you did like, uh, please comment in the comments uh, below. Hit that like and subscribe as always. Uh, if there are things I could do better or things you'd like to see, let me know. Um, unfortunately, if the recommendation is uh, do something other than airbrush, that's unfortunately not going to happen. That's a tool in my tool chest and it's one I'm going to continue to use. I've been using an airbrush for probably 11 years or so and um, that's like asking a mechanic to stop using his pneumatic tools and use a wrench um, if he's got a better tool for the job you use it um, I don't think there's anything wrong with hand painting but um, there are things that are just very difficult and would take a long time to film or explain and just it's the tools that I have the tools I use and I'm sorry if uh, if some of you guys may or may not want to um, uh, learn airbrushing stuff that's what I do there are plenty of channels that don't hopefully that doesn't sound too catty that's not my intent it's more just letting you guys know like here's kind of the line in the sand these are the tools I have and I'm going to teach from the perspective of, of what I use for my tools and that may or may not be um, useful for everyone so but hopefully it is I hope that you guys enjoy it and again hopefully it didn't sound too catty or anything because I'm not trying to be that way um, I just constantly get uh, messages about the uh, or comments about uh, doing something without an airbrush and it's just i use it for so long like i just I don't i don't like i'll show you guys an example <laughs> i'm harping on that a minute um this is an example of doing stuff without an airbrush which is fine um the br or the black is but like this is all like me hand blending this guy up and it takes forever and you can do it but like if i was trying to do a tutorial on this this is going to take a, a crazy amount of time and i, I honestly do think that presenting tools that will allow you guys to get good quality at fast speeds is the way to go. Um, and that's an example of hand blending. Um, this one here, 
this is, um, I did airbrushing and then did a lot of hand details, but the core yellow and stuff is with an airbrush and then edge highlighted. So it is a valuable tool. And again, uh, for those of you guys who are on the fence, I'm happy to discuss uh, options for airbrushes or give you recommendations or maybe do some tutorials that uh, dive deeper into um, usage, maintenance, and things of that nature. So. Uh, but that said, I think that's going to bring me to the end of the video on this guy. I think he is pretty much done. I think we're going to be on to the next. Uh, I apologize that this has taken so long to get out. Um, the focus of the channel has generally been um, battle reports, and I sprinkle in tutorials when I have time. Um, and this is just one of those times, so I'm not sure what will be the next tutorial up on the chopping block. But at some point when I find something that gives me the muse and I want to paint and show you guys, I will uh, whip that out and start to start doing another tutorial. And that's it as always, keep painting your models, keep rolling your dice, be open-minded to new tools and techniques to add to your toolbox, and as always, I will catch you guys next time. If you made it this far, you're probably a viewer that already hits that like button when you see a video come up. You're probably already a subscriber, and you probably jump into the comments down below to help support the channel, to help support that algorithm. But if you're looking for some other ways to help support the channel too, make sure you check the description down below. Maybe you want to pick up some paints from Monument Hobbies. That's my paint of choice, the Pro Acrylic line is Chef's Kiss, good stuff. Maybe you want to check out some of the offerings from Death Designs, where I work in my day job. We got plenty of 3D printed uh, products as well as MDF terrain, some of the stuff that I have designed myself and we play with here on the channel. And if you're looking to bolster your Battletech uh, ranks, miniatures, and offerings, make sure you check out uh, Bobby from Fortress Miniatures and Games. He's one of the main supporters of the channel as well, and supporting any of these companies helps support what I do and helps to ensure that I can continue to bring content to all of you. If you want to become a super supporter, I highly recommend you guys check out the Patreon. You guys get that extra little edge to help push more content out, and I really do appreciate that. And my ultimate goal on the channel is to continue to be able to not, not only put out the content we have now, but to get to a point where you can put out more content later, whether that be battle reports or painting tutorials or just more rambles, anything at all. I'd like to be doing more content for you. This is something that I enjoy. I like being able to cast a light into the darkness to bring a little bit of hobby positivity to all of you and make you feel good and also enjoy playing games myself. As we do the final sign off here though, I do want to go ahead and switch on over and do the, the scroll of awesome to showcase all the Patreon supporters, the super supporters of the channel to give them some recognition for helping support what I do. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.